So today I want to talk about something really, really important. And it's not, as a lot of the things I talk about are, it's not talked about that much in depth or even in that much of a healthy way in the manifestation community. So today I really want to talk about this, get deep into it, and give you some clarity about it so that you can catch yourself when you slip into this kind of a state or this kind of a mindset, if you want to call it that, and just help pull yourself out of it. Because if your manifestations really are as important to you as you think they are, then you're gonna wanna do this right. And I start out by saying that because sometimes when I say things like what I'm about to say in this video, that can actually trigger some people who are really deep in what I'm about to talk about, they don't see that them rejecting this information and somehow projecting onto me that like I don't know or that I'm wrong, that's them choosing their old story instead of actually choosing what you claim is important to you. Because again, if this manifestation is really so important to you, if you really do want what you claim you want and what you say you want, you are going to actively, very actively address this issue that I'm gonna talk about today. And you're not gonna just pretend like I'm wrong and it's okay to be in this kind of lack and it's totally, cause it, it's not. And you don't actually want what you think you want. If you're gonna be more loyal to codependency, cause that's what I'm talking about today. If you want to be more loyal to how you have been by being in codependency over attachment, then you don't really want what you say you want. You would rather just stay in separation, stay in pain, stay in suffering, stay in not disempowerment, the opposite of empowerment. You would rather be doing that if you're honest with yourself than actually get your manifestation. So sorry, sort of harsh like that, but it's important because this is a really big issue. And again, it is the issue, like I say in the title of this video, it is the issue, the only, the only issue that ever stops a manifestation in my experience, which is vast. So let's get into it. So before I go deeper into this topic, my name is Genevieve. If you're new to this channel, if you just clicked on this video and you don't know me yet, my name is Genevieve. I'm a manifestation coach. And before I came to YouTube, um, pretty much all of my content was on Instagram. So below I've linked my Instagram account if you'd like to go there and see all of my slides and reels and things that I've done in the past. Um, but now I'm primarily on YouTube and also in the links below, I have um, links to my courses. They are very in-depth courses. They like the biggest feedback I get, I think I said this before, is that they are much more in-depth, much more effective. And there's a lot more shifting that happens with the kind of courses that I offer as opposed to like some other courses if you've done other manifestation uh, courses that people are, are, are offering. So anyway, so there's that. I actually would prefer you do a course than do a session with me because I actually think if you do a structured course, that's gonna give you a longer term shift than doing a call with me. Of course, doing calls can be great sometimes and it can give you clarity. It can help you feel grounded and validated and like get your questions answered in like real time. But if you really want to have a structured practice um, that's going to shift you over time, then definitely do a course. Don't do a call with me. <laughs> it's so funny to say it that way. But of course, you can do a call with me if you'd really like to, because that's also an option below down below. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get into this. So I've been doing this a long time. I've been in the manifestation community a long time. I've been a coach for almost two years now. And so I've worked with hundreds of people. I've obviously worked with myself and I've been through this issue personally. And again and again and again, the pattern that I see is the people who this doesn't work for or the people who don't get their manifestations are the people who are still dominantly manifesting from attachment, manifesting from codependency, manifesting from, I am not okay if I don't get this. That's, that's what I mean by dependency and over attachment is that feeling like I just, I'm not going to be okay. I'm too dependent on this. I need this. And I really am suffering without it. If you're in that kind of state, I've just never seen this, this work for people who are in that state. And of course it makes sense because if you are in that kind of state, you are very much like mired. You're very deep in the experience of not having it because that kind of dependency and attachment, you would only feel that way about something that is one important to you. And that's okay. It's okay that something's important to you, but it's so important to you. And you also feel like you really don't have it. And not only do you not have it, but you really need it. You're really suffering without it. And that is of course not going to work because as manifestors, as we know with a law of assumption, the, the way we manifest, it's so simple, but yet it's like, 
we can overcomplicate the simplicity, but it's so simple that the way we manifest anything is that we step into the experience of already having it, of already knowing that's like, yeah, of course I could easily have that, or it's already done, or I know that it's, yeah, not a big deal. I can have it, or I already do have it. Some version of that where you're relating to this thing or this person that you're manifesting in a way that's like, of course I could have that. I'm not like, I'm not suffering without it because I do have it. But, but anyway, so again, it's so simple, but let me get deeper into like kind of the mechanisms of like what is happening with you around this. Cause I know it's easy to just sort of say that, but let's get deeper into like what, what we can do around it, what's really going on with you and why you can't let it go. Cause a lot of you, I do know, you do want to not be codependent. You do want to be less attached and more free about this manifestation. Like I know that you don't want to be in that state. Um, although some of you do, as I said in the beginning of this video, but most of you, most of the people who are drawn to me, they don't want to be in that state. So let's just get deeper into that. So first let me clarify what attachment or codependency is not. What is it not? So it is not your emotions, like it's not your raw emotions. It is not even your missing of that person or thing. It is not your bad vibes. It's not you being in a bad mood. That's not attachment or codependency. It's not those things. And the reason I'm clarifying that is because again, the way we overcomplicate things sometimes is we make things about us mean things that they don't need to mean. Like you having emotions, you having anger or you having sadness, that doesn't need to mean that you are codependent. In fact, it's your job to reclaim those emotions so that they don't accidentally feed into codependency, but them on their own, emotions on their own, aren't automatically codependent. So just because you're feeling sadness about your person, if you're manifesting an SP, or just because you feel anger about not getting something yet, that doesn't mean that you're overattached or in codependency. On its own, it doesn't mean that. And, and as I said, even missing someone, even having missing of this person or this thing doesn't necessarily mean you're in a bad state or you're messing up your manifestation. It's if you made that mean, if you're missing somebody and you made it mean, oh no, this means I want them too much and I've got to fix my missing and I'm doing it wrong. Like those kinds of thoughts that I just said, those are coming from attachment and codependency in terms of like, those are thoughts that you're taking seriously where you are making everything about you mean something about the manifestation. You're, you're almost like, it's almost like your whole existence turns into like, I only exist just to get this person or just to get this thing. And I turn everything about me into something about them. We're not doing that anymore. That's not healthy. It's not helping you. It's absolutely blocking the manifestation, but not in the ways you think. It's not because you had an emotion that blocked the manifestation. It's because you continued to relate to yourself. You continued to relate to yourself in this like not autonomous way. You were, you were relating to yourself in a very just codependent, like, oh, I need to change myself for them. I need to change myself more to get what I want. I'm still not there yet. I'm still not enough. You're using every little piece of feedback about you again, to be about them because it's totally human and normal to have human normal emotions. It's okay to miss somebody sometimes. It's okay to even be mad at somebody sometimes or to feel hurt about things. And the more you can simply like autonomously be grounded in self-regulation and really putting yourself first, being autonomous on your own two feet. This is what I am getting to in this video in terms of like really good manifestors. They become very good at being detached from the 3D world and even detached from themselves because we know as observers of ourselves and of the world, we are not this earthly flesh. We are not our emotions. We are not our thoughts and we are not this 3D world. Although at the same time we are because we're actively in it and creating it. And I have an analogy that I'll get to that will kind of like explain that more in the way that I relate to it more. But when you really practice always being a healthy observer of yourself and knowing that's like, I am bigger than everything, but at the same time, I am temporarily in this human life, I am this, this person. So I have to put this person first. I have to genuinely show up for me, this person, like I am the most important thing in my reality because I am. I am only ever experiencing myself my entire life. And the same goes for you. Everything that you're experiencing throughout your life is filtered through your unique consciousness. The 3D is giving you stimuli, your own body is giving you stimuli, but you're interpreting it through, 
through consciousness as meaning a particular thing about you and your place in the world and what you can have or not have. But it's not the person themselves that's doing anything to you. It's the way you're interpreting that person or it's the way you're interpreting your emotions and the way you're interpreting your own experience. That is all you're ever experiencing. Even your love, even the positive things that you feel for other people is just you experiencing yourself. It's your own consciousness, having a perception, enjoying that perception and just being in that. So when you are really deep in over attachment to a person or a thing or, or something outside of you, it doesn't matter what, but when you're in over attachment, this kind of codependent attachment where it feels like your existence doesn't even matter if you don't have that thing or, or that person, when you're really in that, you are in a state of total self abandonment. You are in a state of, like I just said, telling yourself, I don't matter. I don't even exist if I don't get this person. I'm so dependent on them. And so I've got to do everything. I've got to change myself. I've got to be better. I've got to be perfect. I've got to do everything I can to get them. And again, as I've said, I've never seen someone succeed in manifesting an SP or really anything successfully um, in terms of a thing that's important to them um, when they're coming at it from that state. And a lot of you are, unfortunately, like the, and it makes sense. The reason you got into manifesting is because you came into this already desperate, already super, super hurt by someone usually um, or something. And you felt like I really got to fix this. I've got to change myself. I've got to do something to manipulate reality, to get this to change because I can't handle it. I'm so, so hurt, but we cannot keep, we can't keep interacting with our manifestation from that state. This is what we mean by shifting states. You can no longer be perceiving yourself and this other person or this other thing from that state of, I'm so upset about it. I don't have it. I need to have it. I'm obsessed with it. I'll never be okay without it. You have to get into a state of relating to it healthfully. You have to get back into neutral first. This is a, 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 a thing I say, especially when it comes to manifesting specific people is like before you even get into the manifesting part of it. And all that really means is to practice the wish fulfilled part of it. Before you even get to that, you need to really take time to just focus on yourself and process whatever you've been through around that person or around that scenario. Because if you're still like just mired in the hurt and you are so just in so much hurt and anger or whatever it is, that's totally okay. But you've got to show up for you and deal with that first so that you stop projecting it onto that person and making it all about, oh, this hurt I feel, it'll be fixed once they come. Because that's the nature of codependency is that you think the problem that you feel within you will be fixed by this other person changing. But it's like, no, we, we know in manifestation that we never are in the business of changing other people, changing other people. We're in the business of changing ourselves. And we know that other people might respond to us differently because they are reflectors. All of us humans are reflectors off of each other. And we all are subconsciously connected because there's only one consciousness. We are all coming from the same consciousness. And that's why this works because we are not separate from each other. We are individual little reflectors who have this like temporary experience of total autonomy in these physical bodies but we're all connected and that's how we're always influencing each other energetically, subconsciously. So that's why you really need to show up for yourself differently and let go of this person in terms of that like anxious attachment, that codependency. Cause I just know the more you the more you relate to yourself, like I need this person to be okay. I won't be okay if they don't pick me. It's not going to work. And, and, and like I said, in, like I said in the beginning, you don't really even want this if, if you aren't focusing on that as your primary thing to change, all you want is just to stay in this. Like, just be honest with yourself. If you, if you aren't actually open to doing the deeper work to release codependency, to release this unhealthy attachment, then, then you don't actually want the manifestation. Because if you're saying you want a happy, healthy, secure relationship, you're not being someone who really wants that. You're not showing up for yourself like you really want a happy, healthy, secure relationship. You're showing up and you're choosing every day to relate to yourself and to other people. Like, again, you're dependent on them. Like, like you are not secure, like you're insecure and you need other people to make you feel okay. So the analogy I have for this around kind of how to relate to yourself and to the 3D world more as an observer is to look at this almost like a video game. And it's funny because I don't really play like video games. Like I do play puzzle games. I'm like an old person. Like I really love Candy Crush. And I actually had this thought when I was playing Candy Crush, which isn't even like a person like live action game. Obviously it's a puzzle game. 
but I was playing it and I was thinking, this is the thought I had. I thought, I love this game so much. And I thought that in a moment that the puzzle was actually quite hard, but I realized it's like, I can love this game and appreciate the hardness of it because I know that it's not really real. It's just like a program that was developed. It's a fake problem that is given to me and then I get to just have fun kind of sorting through it, trying to figure it out, but I'm not taking it that seriously because a part of me knows that it's not real. And even if I was playing a more um, complicated game, like a live action game where you are working with other live players, which is more like what the 3D reality is, like you're in this simulation, if you want to call it, and there's other like live players there. And what makes it more interesting is that the other live players are making it interesting, that you're interacting with each other, you're learning how to, how to work with each other. Um, but there's a part of you that knows that it's not real, that knows that you are bigger than the game you are not the game you are you are something greater than the game and even if you die in the game just like you might die in the 3d you know that that's not really death that death is not really real um and so because a part of you knows that you're more resilient in the game and you're actually more engaged in the game and this is what i mean by like i kind of had this epiphany as i thought about candy crush like oh i love this game it's like because i know it's not real i can love it like because i'm not stuck in it like like how we are in the 3d it's hard to love the game of life and the game of manifesting and all the interesting experiences that we go through in life it's hard to love it when you feel like it's so real and it's so serious and this is why you're dependent this dependency comes from you thinking this is so real this is so serious i will not be okay if i don't get this i'm gonna totally freak out if i don't get this and think of like the game analogy again you know how annoying it is to play with people who are like that who are suddenly like taking the game way too seriously and they're having like rage attacks and stuff because suddenly it's like they forgot it's a game and so and it's also funny that once someone starts taking the game way too seriously not only do they start getting angry but they also start losing if you've noticed like they start losing because they can't separate themselves from it. They can't be objective about it anymore. They're just so in there like, oh, this is so real and I'm so frustrated and fuck this game. And they like can't, they can't see themselves clearly and like what they're doing. Like they can't see like, okay, this is just a game, dude. Like start thinking clearly about this. Like start remembering who you are and then you'll be able to play this again and not be so like freaking out about it because you are so like in it as if it's real that you can't even like do this properly. You're like, they're too attached to the game to be able to play well. And honestly, this 3D life is exactly that way. Like if you are so attached to the game, the game of life, this life that you're living, and you are really not able to see objectively like who you're being, what you're doing, like why are you being so obsessed with like needing this person or this thing? If you can't like see objectively what's going on there, you're not autonomous, you're like, it's like being in a dream that's the opposite of lucid, where you're in the dream and you think it's so serious and you've stopped lucid dreaming. It's like as conscious creators, we're learning how to lucid dream in waking life and we're not taking this so seriously anymore. And trust me, like the people who are really successful at manifestation, it's because they really do become more healthfully detached. They really do start lucid dreaming in the 3D world. They stop being so attached to people. But again, it doesn't mean that you are not loving people anymore. You actually, your love for people is more genuine. And this is what I mean about you don't really want a healthy relationship if you don't want to do this. Because your love, when you're in codependency, you are objectifying another person. You are making that person an object, an object that only exists for your satisfaction, for your comfort and pleasure. And you are objectifying them to be an object of security and comfort for you. You're not humanizing them. You're not seeing them as just a real human that you have love for. So when you loosen that weird attachment that's like, I need them to be okay, and you stop objectifying them, the love you have for them is actually much more genuine because you're just like, I just appreciate this human that came into my experience through this game I just love them, Just I just do. I don't even know why, I don't need to know why, but I just love them and I can just appreciate that. And I also know that it's safe for me to appreciate my love for them in a way that I don't need them. Like I don't need them to like validate my love and like force them to show up for me and like conform in the physical just to validate my love. Like I am self-sustained, I am autonomous within myself and whenever I have an experience or a preference, I can just enjoy it 
and just see what happens and set my intention in a more clear grounded way and not in this like oh my god I need it like I'm not doing that so I hope this makes sense so I want you to fall in love with the game of this if that makes sense like stop trying to manifest from and over emotionally attached because if your emotions again your emotions aren't wrong but if your emotions are still very powerfully feeding into codependency because you're not reclaiming the emotions you're not addressing your your emotions if you are in that state of overly emotionally attached to your manifestations in some ways you're not even able to see yourself clearly or reality clearly like you're Again, you're in like a fog. You're not seeing that this is just a game, that this is just like you choosing your preferences and continuing to work towards those preferences, but it's for you. It's for your own enjoyment of the game. It's not for them. And that's the big thing that I know I always tell you guys, like you guys have to maintain your state just for your own sake. You can't be doing this as a means to an end, you need to be doing this as an end in itself. And what I mean by that is you need to be choosing what you believe about yourself and what you believe about the people in your life. And it needs to be like, that's it. I just believe this. I'm not looking for them to prove it to me. I'm not needing the world to change to like validate me. I am independent. I am a sovereign being. I am not attached to anything. I'm not codependent. And, and this is also the thing, you kind of have to start being open to failure in a way. And I think I talked about this before. But another thing I've noticed is that the less people fear failure, the more that you're not threatened by the idea of failure, the more successful, ironically, you tend to be. But if you're going at this with this mindset that's like, I cannot fail, this must work, and I'm just white knuckling through, like, it's, this has to work or else, you know, I'm not going to be okay. If you are so afraid of failing, you are going to fail. Like, that's because that's the epitome of codependency, that again, you are so dependent on this one outcome, on this one person changing for you that you are, you're just not in the right space. You're not seeing anything clearly. You're not seeing that you are this autonomous being that's having this human experience, just experiencing yourself 24 seven all the time. You are in a weird amnesia fog where you think you need that person and you don't. That's your, your, your God self knows that you don't, don't need that person. And the more you relate to them like you do, you're gonna keep pushing them away. You're gonna keep causing resistance between you and that person. So you need to relate to this as if it's like, yeah, I'm gonna choose what feels good to me. I'm gonna play the game, I'm gonna see what happens. And even if I fail, it's like, okay, I'll just try again. You just do the game again and just try again. There's no, cause, cause also that's the thing is like I said before, like there's no real death in a video game. There's also no real death in life. There are there are reflections of cycles of life and death and, and this earth plane, this 3D reality is very much uh, revolves around cycles of life and death. That's a very important way that we actually keep going and, and, and staying healthy on the earth is through cycles of life and death. So the more that you embrace that, that going through death stages or failure stages is not a bad thing. It's actually part of what keeps you alive going through those stages. Um, yeah, you're like, doesn't matter. Even if temporarily that person rejects me for 10 years, they reject that, just throwing that out there. Cause that's the thing that probably scares the shit out of most of you <laughs> to imagine that. But the more you can actually face your biggest fears and really look at them and reclaim those parts of you and be like, you know what, I'm not gonna let the idea of that person ever make me feel like I could fail because my failure, this, the feeling of failure is just a feeling. It's just a feeling that you put on yourself and you're projecting that onto that person as if like what they do causes the feeling, but really it's the way you're interacting with yourself and what you're making mean about yourself. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. So this video has been long now, so I'm going to wrap it up here, but I hope you got some clarity on this topic because again it's very very important it is as i said the thing it's not your emotions it's not your bad mood it's not your bad vibes it's not even you missing them or anything like that it's it's what you are doing in your consciousness towards that person in terms of like do you feel like you can't live without them that you are desperate for them that you need them and and you're not okay because you don't have them as if you're dependent on their behavior in some ways if you are in that kind of state and you're also making your feelings mean, oh no, I don't have them yet. If you're doing anything like that, you're too attached. You're too much in codependency towards that person. And I say person because typically this does happen with people. So we got to address that because you are not going to move ahead the more you stay tethered to that state, the more you keep yourself attached to that state as if you think it's, think it's productive. Because also a thing, it's so funny, people when they start to get healthier, 
and they become more healthfully detached from their specific people or whatever they're manifesting, your ego instantly thinks like, oh, maybe I'm doing something wrong because your ego will lie to you and think that somehow being hyper fixated and so overly attached, your ego thinks that maybe you're figuring something out by doing that. Your ego thinks like, yeah, I'm working on this problem. I'm going to get it figured out eventually. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because this is so familiar and this feels somehow productive to me. So your ego's lying to you. And when you switch states, your ego might be a little bit freaked out and think like, oh, maybe we're not doing this right anymore because suddenly you're not like obsessed with that person and maybe that's a problem. <laughs> But I laugh because it's actually a very good thing that you're actually much more likely to get that person, whatever it is you're manifesting from that state of detachment than you were from the crazy fixated codependent, like, oh my God, I need them place. So anyway, we're going to wrap this up here. My video actually, I was recording so long that my video like cut me off and that's why the, the angle might look a little bit different because I had to like, <laughs> to like delete stuff just to like keep going here. So, um, so I hope you enjoyed this today. Please let me know your thoughts and questions. Again, especially if you're struggling with these issues, both the courses I offer below would be so, so helpful to you in terms of they address this stuff I'm talking about. So I highly recommend that if you want to get deeper into this in a healthy way. So that's that. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye.